Hello, my name is Naila and I'm a Brazilian ecologist doing my PhD in the biology department of the University of Montreal. I came to Canada to pursue a PhD with all the challenges a PhD offers itself, plus the challenge of being a foreigner in a city whose two main languages are not my mother tongue. Currently, I do my research in English, I work as a teaching assistant in French, and of course, I talk to my family and friends in Portuguese. And in the same way I had to master different languages to integrate into this new territory I'm stepping on, I'm also exploring new territories in my research. Since I started my PhD, I'm learning the computational tools we use in science to decipher the information encoded by the DNA. The research area in which we use these tools to explore the DNA information is called bioinformatics, and as I said, I'm also new to it. Basically, I feel like I'm an explorer in both ways, at my work and in my life, which seems cool, and in fact it is, it's fun, and I'm glad to have this privilege. But at the same time, I have a few dumb moments in my day-to-day -day life, like when I see a door where it's written push or pousse in French, I need to tell myself, push is different than pull, pousse, tire. Because the word to pull in Portuguese is puxar, and puxar would make more sense to be translated as push, but it's the exact opposite. So please never judge someone is standing for five seconds or more in front of a door while you're trying to figure out if they need to push or to pull, because this can be a real challenge. And I could tell many other fun facts of stuff that make me feel lost in translation, but I'll stop here and I'll tell you a bit of my motivation to come to this country and feel like a dump in front of exit doors. Well, while I was growing up in Brazil, you can imagine, I was surrounded by nature. And in fact, all of us are. This is not a privilege of people who are born in tropical countries, but it's true that since I was little, I was touched by the contact with nature. I used to live close to a hill, but I like to go hiking during the weekends, and also my hometown has an interesting geographic relief. It's rich in limestone, and which is a kind of rock that dissolves with the rainwater, and then as a result the city has a lot of holes and even caves. And I'm just fascinated by this type of ecosystems, that seem to always look the same, but in reality they are constantly changing as new limestone rocks are made and others are dissolved. Plus, it intrigued me how different forms of life are living there, coping with this changing environment. There are also a lot of lakes in my hometown, and if you are an attentive person like I was when I was a child, we will find a lot of biodiversity in there. Plants, turtles, fish, water birds, shore birds, and plenty of tiny organisms that we only see with a microscope, the microorganisms. And you can imagine that all this curiosity about living beings in the environment led me to study biology as an undergrad. During my undergraduate studies, I immediately got fascinated by microorganisms. They are present in soil, water, inside plants and animals, in the human gut, always playing very important roles to sustain all forms of life. And in studying biology, I then realized that there was a third element in the interaction among the environment and living beings that helps to explain its complexity. So first of all, this interaction between the environment and the living beings is what we study in ecology. And the missing element that helps us to understand its complexity is evolution. Evolution can help us to understand how life adapts to environmental changes. And these environmental changes can be either natural, such as the rain dissolving the limestone rock and transforming the topography of my hometown, or human-driven, like all changes we see in the planet due to climate change and agricultural intensification right now. So today, in my PhD here at the University of Montreal, I am motivated to understand what are the factors modulating rapid adaptation to environmental stressors in microorganisms living water, of course, and I'm glad to be surrounded by so many lakes in Quebec and Canada. I can say for sure that coming here is a good push to develop my skills in bioinformatics, science, language and communication. In my current research, I'm studying what's the impact of two commonly used pesticides in aquatic bacterial communities. I'm working in collaboration with other researchers from my year university, and we perform an experiment in the Large Experiment Array of Ponds, also known as LEAP, located at the Gold Reserve in mont saint hilaire here in Quebec. At LEAP, there are artificial ponds with a capacity of 1,000 liters of water. And for our experiment, we filled these ponds with lake water, and we then applied pulses of the herbicide Roundup, which contains glyphosate that is made to kill plants but can also be toxic to microorganisms. And we also test the effect of an insecticide named imidacropid, used to control pre-sucking insects in agriculture. 
This insecticide can be toxic to a group of small invertebrates present in water and then indirectly affect bacteria because these small invertebrates feed on bacteria, so if they are affected, bacteria could also be, or at least this is what we wanted to test. And as I said before, I'm always using the DNA of microorganisms to answer my questions. Believe me, we can solve real mysteries with a sequence of DNA. So once I have a water sample, I filter it to have the cells present in the water column concentrated on the filter, and then in the lab, I count on a few chemical reactions to extract the DNA out of the cells. All I need to do is to break down the bacteria cell walls that protect their DNA and then purify it. Once the DNA is purified, I'm almost there. I will then count on biochemical reactions that will translate the DNA into something I can read. I mean, the computer will read for me. But I'll give the command to the computer and here is where we use bioinformatics. Still in the lab, I load my samples in a fancy machine called a sequencer that will give me back the sequence of DNA. Then I start my exploration. With the DNA sequence in my computer, I can identify the species affected by the presence of pesticides and I can also go deeper and look into their genomes to see if something else has changed. When I say a genome of an individual, I mean their complete DNA sequence, not only one gene, but the set of genes they have, plus regulatory sequences and other sequences that help the organism to be functional. And I guess you are now probably curious to know what I found out, right? So basically, we found that glyphosate, in a very high concentration, affected bacterial communities at the experimental ponds, but in acropid, the insecticide didn't. It's interesting that most of the concentrations that we test, that range from something refined in water bodies close to agricultural fields to higher doses, actually did not change the composition of bacterial communities. Only the highest tested dose did. And this highest dose of glyphosate selected for a group of bacteria that is actually very diverse and well studied. It's a group that contains species known to be resistant to glyphosate already, but also to other contaminants such as antibiotics. And this led me to a second question. Is it possible that the pesticide pollution selects for bacterial resistance to antibiotics? Well, you need to wait a little bit to have the answer for that question, but guess what? I am studying the genome of bacteria to solve this problem. As I said, DNA sequences can solve many mysteries, and especially for organisms like bacteria that are very small, reproduce very fast, and thus show high mutation rates, it's possible to explore their genomes and actually track these mutations over time. Then, we can see how species are coping with stress caused by environmental contamination. Sometimes I feel just like bacteria in changing environments, you know? I'm always facing new challenges in my life and I need to show that I'm able to adapt fast. But as a final message to this video, I would like to remember that even though many species are able to adapt to change, at the rate our planet is currently changing, only a few of them will actually survive. We are already seeing a big loss of biodiversity and we need to act fast to try to reverse it. And the same is valid to us as a society. I was lucky to learn different languages and to be prepared to face the challenge of a PhD abroad, but as a society, we should provide this benefit for anyone who wants it, not only the most privileged. And I hope with this video, I have convinced you why it's so fascinating and important to study changing environments and microorganisms. I expect as well to encourage other students to face new challenges, especially those coming from developing countries like me. Thank you for watching.